Emulators. A nearly infinite library filled with older games and older er games. They contain all the fun of gaming with none of its simplicity. But look, I finally get to play a 16 year old single player game with my buddy halfway across the world. I have no friends. Some work better than others and some will cause you a ton of frustration. Ugh. But how do all these emulators stack up with one another? What settings do we change or modify depending on our games? Dolphin, easy. No problem. Project 64, easier yet. But only after copying over an X input plugin. It's down in the description. SNES was done in my sleep. But how about PS2 stuff? Frustrating as it might be to use a Steam controller to configure another Steam controller that's configuring our emulator, this was the most rewarding config to set up. There's something magical about playing Metal Gear Solid 3 with a new input method, and this new device performs wonderfully. A touch-based D-pad perfectly complements the right pad when used as a joystick, and the physical joystick plays well when it's correctly sending X input. Modifying the back paddles to hit F keys when pressing face buttons means we can save scum to our scrub lord heart's content. It's kind of a happy accident that Valve might have made the best controller for emulators. Just think about it. Got dual stage triggers for the GameCube, customizable D-pad for the SNES and NES, a joystick and all the buttons for the PS2 stuff, and we have these neat grips on the back if we ever need to alt tab when things get all fu- I'm loving the emulated joystick for Metal Gear Solid 3. Just bump up the outer dead zone so we use the whole pad as a joystick, instead of this dumb restrictive circle on the pad. The funny thing about older game design is the majority of these games were still figuring out dual stick configurations, and as such, a lot of them relied on the left stick for the majority of the game's functions. Camera controls 11 years ago were wonky, and they typically inverted both axes, but strangely, this works well for us when using the touchpad. The new controller HUD works beautifully for training yourself to use the new D-pad or figure out what the hell all these bleeps and bloops mean for the joystick's advanced settings. Valve has changed how some of these work, but the default settings are probably the best available. Linear stick response curve behaves the same way you think about a traditional stick. For games that use the right stick to control the camera, I like to set this to relaxed. It just means the joystick takes a bit longer to reach 100% output. Adaptive centering is dog shit. Don't use it. It means you can only activate the joystick in the center of the pad. So if we ignore adaptive centering, this is the same as this. Crank up the joystick's outer dead zone to about 85% to the right. So here's a problem with PCSX2, or rather, a problem with the Steam controller not being a PlayStation controller. Pressure sensitive buttons. MGS relied heavily on the DualShock's pressure sensitive buttons, and as far as I know, the Steam controller doesn't have these. Maybe there is a workaround in the PS2 emulator, so if anyone has an idea, put it down in the comments. For now, if you're playing MGS, find the thermals and equip them whenever you want to take aim. Super Mario. Sunshine. I hate sunshine. I don't like this game either. Add Dolphin to your Steam library as a non-Steam game. Configure the controller as an Xbox pad. Bind Soft Squeeze and Big Picture Mode to the Xbox's left trigger, then bind the click action to something on your keyboard. I chose one for the left trigger and two for the right. Configure the gamepad. This one's self-explanatory, except L Analog will be trigger L and L will be keyboard one. Same thing on the right trigger. Analog to the Xbox's trigger, and set the click to keyboard too. And you're done. Go play your Super Mario shit shine, or Metroid. Metroid's fun. You can't fall down in Metroid. Holy shit, I'm playing Wii games with the Steam controller. Swing up, swing right. Wait, that doesn't work? Oh. Well, we can at least move the cursor around with the gyro. Uh, that's cool, I guess. All right, here's what you gotta do. Start with the gamepad template. Okay, click the gyro thing. Okay, top left box to joystick move. Okay. Gyro activate button to always on. Okay. Start dolphin. Yep. Configure Wiimote. Yup. Right click on the up box in the IR column. Find right Y plus under X input. Yup. Keep filling these boxes in until you get to right. Okay, stop. A button goes to the A button. B goes to the B button. No, no, the right trigger. One and two can fuck off or bind them to whatever you want, like the shoulder buttons on your controller. Plus and minus to whatever, and start is the home button. Shake on the X axis is bound to the X button. Shake on the Y is bound to the Y button. There, it's nice and easy to remember. That should be enough to get you going for most games. But first, check this out. Go crank up the haptics and set them to high. Since the gyro is all set up in Dolphin, go ahead and test it. Just move the controller around. Do you feel that? The closer you get to the edge of the screen, the more intense the haptics are. When you reach the border of your screen, you'll feel a sudden pulse, indicating that you've reached the edge. That's it. I'm done. Steam controller does what Nintendo don't. Do you want to use my configs for Dolphin or PCSX2? Check out the description for a pastebin link containing my configs. Don't know how to set them up? That's alright. Just click here.